We've all seen ugly cars and wondered how they ever rolled off the assembly line. You can find ugly cars from pretty much every era, so it's been an issue as long as cars have existed. Here are our picks for the ugliest cars. AMC Gremlin Our first ugly car from AMC is the Gremlin, which debuted on April Fool's Day 1970. Sure, it was a sales hit, but not because over its design. Instead, its appeal on its price. It was cheap to build and cheap to buy, and it was really ugly hatchback. The weird rear end looks like it accidentally got chopped short and is matched with a disproportionately weirdly long hood. Even AMC's design chief didn't think it looked good, but that didn't stop it from hitting showrooms. AMC Marlin If you're looking for the worst cars to look at, then look no further than AMC, which has three cars on our list. The Marlin hit the market in 1965 and was produced through 67. It was really ugly car. Unlike some cars that look good from certain angles, no matter how you look at the Marlin, it holds zero appeal. Three years and three names weren't enough to save a car that really needed a thorough facelift. AMC Pacer Rounding out our list of ugly AMCs is the Pacer Hatchback. It's got a little bit of AMC Gremlin styling, with its stubby butt and long hood, not a good look. The AMC Pacer was oddly wide, with huge expanses of glass that made passengers look a little like they were a goldfish in a bowl. It was supposed to improve visibility and aerodynamics, but from a design perspective, the effort didn't work. AMC built its ugly fishbowl from 1975 to 1980 before putting the Pacer out. The Aston Martin Lagonda is an ugly car that was built back in 1976. This car looks unbalanced, with a rear that's too short and a wide flat hood that's the length of an aircraft carrier's deck. Only 645 units were sold before Aston Martin decided this was not going to be one of its classic cars. Cadillac Cimarron Cadillac is a luxury brand known for building beautiful, bold cars. They have plush, well-equipped interiors, powerful engines, and stunning exterior designs, except for this one. The Cadillac Cimarron was supposed to be a mini luxury sedan at a reduced price. Cool idea, but it didn't look like a Cadillac. It looked like a Chevy, which makes sense because it shares its exterior design with the Chevrolet Cavalier. Inside it was a bit more upscale, which couldn't make up for the compact car proportions with Cadillac badges. Literally the definition of putting lipstick on a pig. You could buy this from 1982 to 88, before Cadillac finally decided this wasn't the right direction for the brand. Chevrolet Lumina If you're asking yourself whether we're calling out the Lumina sedan or the minivan as one of the ugliest cars, then the answer is both. The Chevrolet Lumina sedan debuted in 1989 and lasted until 2013. It was just a milk toast sedan that held zero appeal. But hey, if sedans aren't your thing, there's the even uglier Chevrolet Lumina APV, which is a minivan. The front end has a sloped hood that leads right up to the windshield in a single line, giving it a wedge-shaped design like a giant doorstop. The massive windshield meets with equally massive triangular windows at the edges. Why? Why? Chrysler Crossfire had plenty of potential. It combined a little bit of vintage design elements, but something went horribly wrong from concept to production. This two-door tried quite hard to be a sporty little coupe worthy of its Mercedes underpinnings. It was a poorly designed mishmash that just didn't work as a sports car. Its exceptionally broad fenders and fastback roofline didn't appeal to the public, and after five years in production was out. Ford Edsel the failure of car design from 1958 is the Ford Edsel. The idea was to add a mid-range sedan to the Ford lineup with lots of standard features, plenty of options, and beefy V8 engines. From the rear end, it's fine, from the side it's fine, from the front end, now we have a problem. That horse collar grill was striking for all the wrong reasons. People were not impressed and even today it can't manage to garner retro appeal. Ford stopped production of one of its ugliest cars after just two years, in 1960. Ford Pinto One little car, so many problems. 
the Ford Pinto is known as the car that catches fire. This is thanks to a fuel tank that could burst into flames if it was punctured during a collision. That's not really a good selling point, but neither was the design. It was dull with nothing attractive to save it from being a bore. It was all wide expanses of metal that just sort of melded into one blob. Car enthusiasts don't want to drive around in an amorphous blob, especially one known for catching fire. Nissan Juke It wasn't that long ago that the Nissan Juke was still on sale a few years ago, so if you want to buy this quirky hatchback there's a used model at your local dealer for sale. Not that we recommend doing that. A subcompact crossover sold from 2010 to 2017 in the US, the most notable styling elements on this car were its headlights and fog lights. These were placed on top of the hood, like a multi-eyed frog. The overall proportions were off, with its small roof and windows placed on a wide body with too many lines. The Juke actually drove pretty well, but not well enough to justify that exterior design. Pontiac Aztec it's pretty much impossible to compile a list of the ugliest cars without including the Pontiac Aztec. It probably seemed like a great idea on paper. This crossover has a roomy interior for passengers, optional all-wheel drive for bad weather, and great cargo versatility. It had innovative features designed to appeal, but ultimately this car looks just hideous, with oddly shaped plastic cladding along the wheel arches and door roof proportions completely out of whack. The closest the Pontiac Aztec came to being cool was its stint on Breaking Bad, placed there to emphasize the main character's depressing life. It was in production for a few years. Toyota Previa Today, Toyota builds the popular Sienna minivan, which is a lovely vehicle. Back in the 90s, it built an entirely different minivan called the Previa. It offered a couple of engines, including a supercharged option, and it had available all-wheel drive. The interior was highly functional, with second-row captain's chairs that swiveled to face rearward and a third row that folded up. But the exterior, it somehow managed to have both a wedge-shaped body that looked awful. Toyota also threw in some horrible plastic cladding. Toyota Prius The Toyota Prius is easily one of the most recognizable cars on the road. This hybrid has been through a lot since its introduction way back in 1997, with multiple variants coming and going over the years. While the Prius has evolved, the styling remained the same. Sure, it gets exceptional fuel economy, and now there's even a plug-in Prius, but that shape sure takes the fun out of functionality. The Prius deserves credit for being the first mass-produced and fully successful hybrid. Now here's the next challenge for Toyota, make it look appealing. Subaru Trebekah The Subaru Trebekah was the automaker's first seven-seat SUV that was on the market from 2005 to 2014. It had an ugly facade characterized by a round exterior and a narrow rectangular grille that appeared visually unbalanced. Looks aside, the Trebekah also suffered from poor reliability ratings. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.